Hi guys, today I'm here to give you a review of this book, Emperor, The Gates of Rome by Khan Igolden. I guess that's how I said. So the first thing you should know is that I started reading this book in 2014 and I got through this much of the book, like 25% over the course of three years. So I read the rest of it in the past two weeks. So I went into this book knowing only about Julius Caesar, the play by Shakespeare. And I knew very little apart from that about uh, Julius Caesar's history or much about Rome apart from that. For me, this was extremely slow at the start. I couldn't engage with the book. I couldn't really actually place the characters, like what, what was happening in the stories. I didn't know exactly who they were and what was going on. So the book starts out by following two boys, one named Marcus and the other named Gaius. And I didn't know Julius Caesar's name was Gaius. These two boys are 11 years old. They're really close friends and one of them is the son of Julius, uh, which is revealed later. Even though I picked this book up again two weeks ago to start reading it, I thought it was pretty slow and it took me time to re-engage with the story and I had to go through who the characters were again. And this is turning out to be such a shitty review right now. <laughs> I'm sorry that you're watching this video. But also, thank you. <laughs> okay, spoilers, by the way. Should I have a separate spoiler section? You can watch till there if you're gonna read this book, which I recommend that you read if you're a fan of fiction and of the life of Julius Caesar, or if you liked Shakespeare's play a lot. After the initial few chapters, I felt like the book was really easy to read. It felt like a really light read after I finished it. The writing style, I couldn't really get into it at the start of the book, which might explain why. I had difficulty reading it. Later, as you go through the book, you get used to it. The description of the fighting scenes in this book, it doesn't just write off action scenes like, okay, they start fighting and there's a wish of swords and this person comes out winning. There's actually a description of how the sword play happens. I thought that was pretty neat because I haven't read a book that describes action so well. Since there isn't much knowledge about uh, the youth years of Julius Caesar. I think this book does a really good job to fill the gap with fiction. A lot of the facts uh, do not align with this book, uh, like in the way that they happen in real life. And even though the order of the events is off, it does uh, tie together really well towards the end. This book does showcase loyalty, the importance of freedom, the life of a soldier or someone living a noble life during that time in Rome. Okay, so now on to the spoiler section of this video. So Gaius and Marcus are little kids. Julius, Gaius' father, wants them to train for like combat or to become soldiers. So they go to the main city one day. Julius somehow gets Renius, a well-known warrior, to train these two kids. A bunch of the book is that, them in training. They throw in this character, Alexandria, who is a slave girl around the age of these two boys. She serves as a distraction at one point so that we get a sense of how Renius is a really strict teacher. Throughout this first part of the book, they showcase how Gaius and Marcus are building up their strength and now they're stronger and smarter after two years of training with Renius. These people live on an estate uh, a little away from Rome. Then there comes a point in the book where slaves from Rome decides to go around wrecking streets of Rome, stealing stuff from houses and raping people and stuff like that. And they make their way from Rome to the estate where Julius and his family stays. There we actually get a sense of how good warriors Gaius and Marcus have become. Well, mostly Marcus because Gaius is uh, injured at the moment because of the fight with Renius. Marcus is shown as this like killing machine. He's killing people. He kills one and he's on to the next person instantly and he is just such a lethal killer and Renius is really like shocked maybe. I don't know if he's shocked but he's kind of proud of uh, Marcus that he does that. During this battle, Julius dies, so Gaius is left as the head of the estate now. He's the only child and his mom is like kind of deranged. Obviously he's really sad at the death of his dad. He has no idea what he's going to do, so he, he decides to go meet his uncle in the city whose name is Marius. This is where the main plot of the story gets introduced. These two are just like fighting for control over Rome constantly. The entire, like, the entire rest of the book is based on that. 
and I think it's a really interesting rivalry. So finally there's this news of some uprising happening in another part of the Roman Empire. One of Sulla or Marius has to go and crush the rebellion basically. Ends up being uh, Sulla that goes and Marius is like, oh yeah, now I have control over the entire city. And when he comes back, I'm gonna crush him in a battle. In the meanwhile, there's like this love interest, Alexandria, that I talked about earlier. And I felt like that character was just there to serve as a distraction even for the reader so that it's not just constantly about war and battle. So both the main characters that we have, Marcus is sent away to fight in a legion. So Gaius is left alone in Rome with his uncle. During the starting of the book, Marius is introduced as like this character that you don't know like how he's going to react to Gaius and you're not thinking he's gonna be really a friendly person to him. Turns out that he's a really helpful and a really honorable man. He really loves his wife. And you can tell by the way his character is written that he really loves Rome. He knows the name of every single person who is under his command. The soldiers really look up to him like as a father figure. Gaius really does pick up on this and towards the end of the book you can see that Marius encourages Gaius to go around and speak to all the soldiers. There are a few touches like that in the book that I really enjoyed. Even though Marius dies like during the siege, uh, I really like that twist that a bunch of robed messengers were sent uh, with the intention to only kill Marius and like his subordinates so that the battle could not turn in favor of Marius. Sola would obviously win whether it was a big fight put up or a small one. But even after Marius dies, his soldiers are so loyal to him that after he gives the word to them to kill and fight the entire battle until the last man standing, they do that. Put up a really good fight against Sola like for three or four days if I'm not wrong. But uh, one place where we had the opposite happen was the guards at uh, Marius's mansion, right? They abandoned their post after like one or two days and Marius's wife is left alone in the mansion. She sends Alexandria away and she's freed from slavery. She goes into the bath and she slits her wrist. I don't understand why she did that. She could have like tried to run away with Alexandria too. Like she could have worn a hood and tried to run away. Even though you don't know whether you're gonna survive, at least you try to save your life, right? That part was sort of a letdown because she could have probably escaped. On the other hand, we have Cornelia who Julius marries and now Gaius has changed to Julius because I guess when you get married, your second name becomes your main name now. I think I didn't get the point of that happening. But okay, finally there is concrete proof that Gaius is actually Julius Caesar. So this girl, her father comes to take her home on the third day of the siege. She says, No, I'm gonna stay here with my guards and wait for Gaius because if he's alive, he's gonna come here looking for me. Which is completely stupid. By doing that, she basically increases the risk factor for both herself and for her father. If she just would have gone with her father. Right? Things would have been a lot easier for her. It isn't stated in the book what happens after her father leaves her and goes away. Like maybe we'll find out in the next book if she's alive because if you've read Julius Caesar the play, you know that Caesar is married to Calpurnia, which I don't think Cornelia is the same person. So maybe she dies in the siege because that would make sense. Overall, I found this book to be a really good read. It was an enjoyable book. So that was my review of this book. If you've read it, let me know if you've liked it or if you didn't like it or whatever. Because I'm going to be reading the second book in the series. And if you want me to review that book, let me know. But I don't think that's going to make a difference to whether I review it or not. I think I have 20 subscribers now which I don't understand why all of you are still subscribed to me because I haven't put out a video in over a year. Oh, also, I was inspired to make this video by Lily C. Reads and Jesse the Reader because I just discovered the booktube side of YouTube and I have to say I'm pretty impressed because I didn't know that section of YouTube existed. Once I found it, I was like, wow, because I really enjoy books and I haven't read properly in the past five years or something because I used to read a lot in school and I don't anymore and I'm trying to get back into the habit of reading but I can't really guarantee anything can I because I'm so inconsistent with videos I haven't uploaded in the past two years.